Amen. So family, let's rest in God right now through His Word, through the Word of God right now. Let's allow our spirit and our soul to be rested in His Word. Today's topic is to know what she is, to, to know that I am loved, I am connected to God unconditionally. To worship is to know that you are loved and you are connected to God unconditionally. So true worship is a knowing, it's not a believing, it's a knowing. It's to know that you are loved, loved, loved unconditionally. You are connected to God unconditionally. The word unconditionally there means without religion. You are connected to God directly, without any any condition, without through through any means, without tradition, without formula, without any culture. You are connected to God unconditionally, without religion, without any form. You know, you are loved of God. You are loved by God, not by any requirement, not because you join any any group of religion. True worship is when you come to a point when you know that you are loved by God. Loved by God. Unconditionally. Connected to God. Unconditionally. Without any channel. Not going through pastor favor. Not going through rest generation. Not going through Christianity. Not going through any formula. You are connected to God. You know, a, a generation is coming when you know, humanity is going to walk out of religion and tradition and culture and, and, and found themselves connected to God directly. Just, just the way that, just the way there is nothing between you and the sky. The sky is, is there is a direct, direct communication, there is a direct connection between you and the sky. That is the way you are connected to God without any religion, without any formula. No, the, the, the world is coming to a point where you come out of your African tradition, you come out from your religious tradition, you come out from your family culture, you come out from all these, and you get into humanity, into pure, pure humanity, to pure humanity connection to God. Without any religion, without any tradition. So, what is true worship? True worship. Jesus told this woman, we're gonna read it. Yes, we're gonna read it. Jesus told the woman, he said, Time is coming when the woman of Samaritan. Time is coming when you know you shall not say that in this in this mountain we worship or in this mountain we worship. You know, true worshipers are the ones that worship God in truth and in spirit. It's no more gonna be in this mountain, in this religion, in this tradition, in this culture. It's not going to be a location, it's going to be a knowing, it's going to be a state, a state of your mindset. True worship is a state of your spirit, a state of your mindset. Amen. So what is true worship? When you come into a state of mindset that you are loved by God. You are loved by God unconditionally. You know, not by what you do or by anything. You are loved by God right now, tomorrow, yesterday. Today, any moment, any second, you are loved by God. True worship is when you come into a state of mind that you are connected to God unconditionally. Without any formula, without doing anything, I am connected to God. You know, I am I and God are one. It's, it's a rain, it's a state of a divine mindset that you are connected. The, the, the veil have thought from down, from up to down, there is an accessibility to God. It's not actually that you are going to assess God. You are connected to God already. Your spirit, your, your mind, and your heart, your soul, everything. You, at this moment, right now, you just know. When you wake up in the morning, you just know I am connected to God. God is with me. God and I are one. I am one person connected to God in a good time, in a bad time, in a good, in a good day, in a bad days, in, in the morning, in the evening, in the afternoon. I am connected to God without going through a religion, without going through a person. I am just, I am 
at the branch and he is the vine. Just as the branch is connected to the vine, I am connected to God. That is true worship. Worship is a state of mindset. Worship is not a connection to God through religion. Worship is a connection to God outside religion. So you are in worship when you connect it to God directly, not by not through religion. You are in worship. You are not in worship when you connect to God through religion. Spirituality is a knowing. Spirituality is a knowing. It's not a believing. The believing is a is a mindset. The believing is a fruit of a knowing. When you know that I'm loved, you know that it is finished. You know that I am connected to God. You know, believing flows. It flows naturally to you. When you know that I'm, when you know that you are loved, you know, believing in God is just a fruit. It's something that happens to you without knowing, without your conscious awareness. So I want us to read this scripture. We just gonna read. How do you go through this again? Okay, we're gonna read just two scriptures and we go. Now the Bible says in John chapter chapter 4, verse 23 to 24, Jesus said to that woman of Samaria, He said, But the hour is coming, and now it is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship. The hour is coming when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And this is the will of the Father from the foundation of the world that the, the, his, his image is going to connect to Him directly without religion, without formula, without tradition. The Father has always prayed, predestined from the beginning. That time that, that there's gonna be a time, you know, when Jesus when Jesus is gonna die on the cross and take away every judgment and take away every and fulfill every law, every requirement of divinity towards humanity. When Jesus is gonna die on the cross and defeat the devil on the percent, and every victory will be given, every battle will be fought and, and be won. You know, time is coming when God is going, Jesus, God is gonna reconcile. Humanity with Himself through Jesus' finished work on the cross. So the Father has always seek that. The Father has always seek the, the time when humanity is going to be connected to Him unconditionally. You know, the Father has always seek when He is always when Jesus is going to come on the cross and take away every every religion, take away everything that is hindering humanity from God, every laws. Everything, so the other thing that have hindered humanity from God, you know, humanity right now, there are a lot of religions on earth, and they tell you, this one tell you, you must come to God through this, and through us. This one tell you, you must come to God through us. There are confusion everywhere. Nobody knows how to access to God. The lot of hindrances say you must come to us. It's just like agents, you know, agents that are looking for. That are, that are bringing people, employing people into houses and all that. Come, come to me. Come, come to this. Have access to this house through me and all that. But the father seek it. The father was patiently waiting for the time that Jesus is going to come and pray and, and fulfill all the law. And fulfill all the law and close all the chapters and close all the doors, all the ways. So that humanity is going to have access to the father. The father seek it such. A time when they know there's going to be a total, unconditional connection between the Father and us. You know, we're going to be completely loved by the Father. The Father has always loved us, but, you know, the fallen nature system has denied us of the privilege of being loved by the Father. So there were a lot of rules, regulations and all that. So the Father seeks a time when Jesus is going to come on the cross and, and broke and, 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 and put upon him all the judgment, all the condemnation, all the requirements, and fulfill them on the cross. So that we will be freely loved by the Father. So that we will be in the consciousness of I am loved by God. Unconditionally. So that we will forever live in the conscious state of being loved by our Father. The Father seeks this from the foundation of the world that has been the will of the Father, that we will come in a point in life when there is no more place. We
You don't need religion to relate to God. Verse 24 says, God is a spirit, and, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is to prove to you God is not religion. And they that worship God should not worship God by religion, by the spirit. By the spirit. Spirituality is having an access to God outside the religion. Spirituality is a rest in God's love outside religion. Spirituality is when you come to rest in God's love. Not the way Christians say it should be. Not the way Islam say it should be. Not the way this tradition or this religion say it should rest in God. Christianity is, is resting in God's love outside, outside religion. You know, so that is amazing. Spirituality is when you come into a rest in the Father's love. There is no requirement, there is no formula, there is no tradition. When you come into this complete rest in the Father's love. And this, this rest, this resting in God's love, this, this rest is not a rest in, in, in your love for God. It's a rest in God's love for you. So religion is resting in your love for God. But spirituality is resting in God's love for you. He said, they are worshiping God, worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. We are talking about spirituality here. You know, the, the way of worshiping God is a rest in the Father's love. That is worship. A rest in the finished work of Christ. That is worship. A rest in the finished work of Jesus. That is the truth. That is how to worship God in spirit and in truth. Spirituality is a rest in the Father's love. Spirituality is a rest in the finished work. That is the truth. You know, so God's love for us is the finished work. See, when, when the Bible says, For God so loved the world, what it means is that God finished. Okay, when you talk about God's love, talk about the finished work. The Bible says, God told Jeremiah, Before I formed you, before I brought you out of the womb, I have already certified your life. That is the way that God loves us. God's love is not an emotion. God's love is, it is finished. God's love is child. You are perfect. You are fixed up. You are my perfect handwork. You are a finished work. God's love is not an emotional love. The love, the definition of God's love is, it is finished. Alright, so, so when, the, when you have this mindset now you understand when the Bible says, for God so loved the world, means for God has finished the world. You know, for God so loved the world, means the world, I am done with you. I have finished everything about you. And that is the reason why I sent Jesus to prove it to you. So, the believing Jesus is believing it is finished, is believing the love of God, believing it is finished. So let's read this scripture, this last scripture, right now. Let, let's read John chapter, first John, first John chapter 4, verse 16 says, And we, we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he, he who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. And we say we have known and believed. The love that God has for us. This is what spirituality is. This is what, what true worship is. When to know God's love and to believe God's love. The word know and believe means we have come into the full into a full state of his love for us. What God wants you to know is his love for you. What God wants you to believe is his love for you. So spirituality is a it's an exercise of a rest in God's love, not a rest in your love for God. Okay, religion is a rest. Religion is a is a walking, walking of loving God. You know, it's, it's focused on loving God. But spirituality is a rest in the Father's love. So it's a turnover. You know, religion is an exercise of loving God, but spirituality or through worship. Is resting in the Father's love, resting in God's love. He said that we have known and we have believed the love that God has 
for us. Say, God is love. He who abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. So do you see the clear picture of what worship is? When the Bible says, you know, God is a spirit and they that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. This, this scripture is just translating it. It's just giving you another clear picture of what it means. God is a spirit. They that worship him, worship, she worship him in spirit and in truth. It means that we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. They that dwell in love dwell in God. And God dwells in them. That is worship. That is spirituality. Spirituality is dwelling in God's love. The word dwells. Dwell means rest. Rest coming to a state of consciousness that I am loved by God. That is worship. That is spirituality. That is the truth. The truth is that God is love. The truth is that He has loved us. The truth that we believe in is that is the truth of God's love for us. We have known God's love for us. We have believed God's love for us. This love is not a religious love, it's not a Christianity love, it's not a love of any tradition. It's a pure, it's a, it's, it's, it's a definition of it is finished. When the Bible says God loves you, means God has finished everything about you. He has come before you, He finished your, your end before your beginning. He, he ends everything in your life. You are safe, you are secured. You have come into life. He has taken away your shame. He has taken away your judgment. He has taken away your condemnation. He has won every battle in your life. He has taken away all sins. He has, he has justified you. He has made you perfect in Him. He has brought you into His holiness. He has brought you into His righteousness. He has brought you into His destiny, into His perfectness. He has brought you into His peace, into His rest. He has brought you into all that He is. It's, it's an eternal life. The knowing, knowing the love of God is knowing that it is finished. It's knowing it is finished. Believing the love of God is believing it is finished. God is love and they that dwell in love dwell in God. So to dwell in love is to dwell in the finished work of Christ. We dwell in the finished work of Christ. So that is how to have a true worship. True worship is not a, it's not a, it's not an activity. It's a knowing. It's a, it's a consciousness of His love for you. It's a consciousness of His unconditional connection with you. True worship is when you come into a consciousness that I am loved. A consciousness that it is finished. My life is finished. So when you hear about God's love, here yeah, it is finished. When you hear about love. The love of God. Let, let not the love of God sound like you know one one anything. You know, let it not sound religious. Let it sound it is finished. God's love means I have taken care of you. Everything is set in child. I am your beginning and your end and your middle. You are a written book in my hand. You are written on the palm of my hand. I have completed you. You are a completed. Life, you completed wisdom to my hand. That is good. There is no other way God manifests His love than it is finished. You know, when He wanted to create man, He went and created everything, made sure everything was finished before He brought man into the picture. That is what God's love is. There is no other definition of God's love except it is finished. If you understand this, you understand what the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his son Jesus. Loving the world means before the beginning of the world, he finished the world. If the world can understand that, child, you are finished. If the world could understand, it is a finished world. He said, eternal life happens to them. He that believeth in the love of God, in shall have eternal life, shall have an experience of eternal life. So the belief of the love of God is to believe God finished the world. And he sent Jesus to actually reveal, reveal to the world that you are a finished work in my head. And he that believes on this finished work of God has eternal life, has an experience of eternal life. So believing in 
the love of God is not believing in religion, it's not joining religion. You know, believing in Jesus is not joining religion, it's believing in God's love. And believing in God's love is not a religion, it's believing in the finished work of God. So, for God so love the world means predestination. For God so love the world means it is finished. For God so finished the world. For God so finished the world before the foundation of the world that he sent his son Jesus to reveal to the world that you are finished. And whosoever that believeth of this finished world shall not perish but have everlasting life. There is a law of it is finished. There is a law of life called it is finished. It's the, higher, the highest law of life. There is a law of humanity, the law of the fallen nature, you know, and there is a law of it is finished. He said, whosoever that believeth on it is finished, child, before you were born, I have finished you. He shall not perish, he shall have everlasting life. You know, there is this law, whenever you are at, in, a war, in a war, you know, there is an anxiety that comes your way. If you remember, my life is finished. Peace comes to you, peace happens to you. Jesus was with that woman. The woman says, okay, it seems that you're a prophet. The woman of Samaritan. When the Messiah shall come, he will tell us the truth. Jesus said, he who speaks to you right now is a Messiah. So it's no more a realm of expectation. It's a realm of awareness. A realm of knowing. It's a realm of knowing. For we, for we have known and we have believed. The love that God has for us. God is love. And he that abides in God. He that abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. This is spirituality. This is true worship. This is how to worship God in spirit and in truth. This is what the Father seeketh. A realm where we abide in the love of God. And how do you abide in the love of God? By abiding in the finished work of Jesus, knowing that Jesus is taking all my judgment, broken all my curses. Every hell is gone. Devil is defeated. Enemy is defeated. I am justified. Christ is glorified. God is satisfied. It is finished. That is how to rest in God. And when you rest in His love, the Bible says, when you abide in in God, He abides in you. When you abide in His love, He abides in you. This is so beautiful. When God says, I love you, it means it is finished. Alright, so true worship is an understanding that you are loved. True worship is an understanding, understanding that you are unconditionally connected to God. Without religion, outside formula, outside tradition. Amen. This is the reason why we believe that all things work together for our good. This is the reason why we are raised in Amen. Amen. Father, we give you praise, Jesus. Let us meditate a little bit on this word right now. Say, God is love. They that abide in His love abides in God and God abides in them. What is love? Love is it is finished. I want you to meditate on the word it is finished right now. My life is a finished work. I am a finished work. I want you to go through it in your mind right now. I am a finished work. I am a finished work. I am a finished work. All things are working together for my good.
Shri Guru Namah